It's a crowded field, and the race for Brooklyn District Attorney is bound to bring out some sharp elbows between now and the September 12th primary. Well, several of the candidates have worked in or are working in the DA's office. One of them is Amma Jumo, who's best known for fighting for child sex abuse victims. She joins us now to talk about what kind of DA she would be, and welcome to BK Live. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hi. Uh, may I? <laughs> One, it's an yes. honor and a pleasure to have you here, uh, and, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, you've outlined a three-pronged integrity agenda uh, plan to hold staff accountable and regain the trust of Brooklynites, saying, if elected, and you stood on the steps of the Brooklyn Supreme Court, you said that you would investigate and prosecute misconduct from within the DA's office. So I just have to ask you, um, you know, how much corruption do you think there is in the DA's office? It's a really good question. And I think we need to focus on the, thir the 22 people who have been exonerated for being wrongfully convicted. And when you look at those cases, you have to ask yourself, how did it happen? Mm -hmm. What happened? Who was accountable? Who should be held accountable? And that's, those are questions that we're not asking at this point. And just so to be clear, I was a prosecutor for 21 years at the Brooklyn District Attorney's Office. I currently work for the Pearl President as a special counsel. But one of the things I did is I worked closely with Ken Thompson when he decided he was going to run for DA. I was in his living room, at around the table, and we were really creating the agenda and what needed to be done. What we needed to focus on was the wrongful convictions. Now, what's interesting to me, as we, he, he did a fabulous job moving forward, and he exonerated 22, but we need to go further than that. First, we, get, we have to get to the bottom of the barrel, mm -hmm. okay? We have to know when does it stop. And number two, we have to then look at the cases that w the people were actually exonerated. And now, what I'm going to do, if the, Brooklyn, if the next Brooklyn District Attorney, of course, I would create an independent commission who would look at those cases to see what, con what was the conduct of the lawyers that were involved. I firmly believe that we have to rebuild the trust with the community. You can't police the outside without holding people accountable within the inside. So Ken Thompson was a transitional figure in justice as we know it here in Brooklyn, going from a long uh, time DA that we had in the form of Mr. Hines. But uh, where personality does matter, there, it has been in the news about your disposition, yelling at interns or junior lawyers, and even fudging timesheets. So we wondered just how you intend to create that culture of change when you've been reprimanded yourself before. Well, let's 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 talk about fact mm -hmm. and what has been reported. So okay. I think this is really important. I, I'm glad you're asking me this question. First and foremost, the article that was in the Daily News wasn't about me. It was. It said I was screaming at interns. Right. Okay. That wasn't what that was all about. Okay. It was a young lawyer who lied. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone who knows me and who has worked for me or even with me knows that I'm a demanding prosecutor. Absolutely. I was chief of crimes against children. Yeah. My job was to ensure that children who were voiceless in the system received their justice. So I do, I hold everyone to a high standard as I hold myself regarding the timesheets. Yeah, I was behind in my timesheets. I didn't fudge. Mm -hmm. I, I'm very, uh, that, that language is troubling because when I left the DA's office, I had 22 days on the books. There was no fudging. I had a whole host of annual leave because I worked my butt off, right. so to speak, and when in doubt, because I was behind in my time, she said, now, this doesn't make it right, but many people were similarly situated. Yeah. The bottom line is, when I started disagreeing with the practices and the way I saw the district attorney's office moving, I became a target, and that was clear. You don't appear on page four or five of the Daily News for screaming at interns mm -hmm. if there isn't a target on your back. There was rumor that I was going to run for district attorney then, and I wasn't. I always thought I would one day, right. but, um, you know, everything changed, and so I'm really happy I left the office. That was probably the greatest thing that really ever happened to me because it made me see what was happening truly in the DA's office. When we lose the values of integrity and truth, when lawyers are allowed to lie to supervision, to supervisors, or to the chief of any given bureau, that's a problem. And when, and when, because what I was asked to do mm -hmm. is I was asked, Ama, 
you need to apologize to this young lawyer. Interesting. So I just on For the lying. scene on the scene me. of this though, I'm saying if mm -hmm. I've never seen a headline about a mm -hmm. man yelling at an intern or being abusive to a subordinate and mm -hmm. looking at this field right now, how there are several prominent women mm -hmm. who by all accounts would do an amazing job as mm -hmm. DA. Mm -hmm. I wondered how much of that is involved in the race or if you feel like you're up against something being a woman and a woman of color more specifically. Well, listen, being a woman of color, I'm always going to be held to various stereotypes. You know, some people will say, when I'm demanding, I'm angry. They'll call me the angry black woman. Mm -hmm. There have been articles written about me because of my advocacy and the way I can, you know, I, the way I advocate in court that I was deemed as hard as nails prosecutor, right. you know. So I can't get caught up in, in, in that kind of language and stereotyping. I'm a black woman in America, and, 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 and more importantly, I'm biracial. My mom was an American Indian, Native American, from the reservation. My father came to this country from Ghana, West Africa. My name is different. I'm always going to be looked at in a different light. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is, it's how I, how that impacts the work that I do. I served faithfully for 21 years in Brooklyn, protecting the children, every child in Brooklyn. Didn't matter what color you are. Didn't matter where you came from or your zip code. What mattered is that you had a voice if you were a child and you were a victim. And I plan on moving forward in that. And that's why I have my three, my three point justice matters um, uh, platform. One, it is about rebuilding the trust. If I experienced firsthand at the DA's office— As an insider. <laughs> right. That lawyers could lie, and it was okay. And if you are targeted because you disagreed, and, you know, I began to see a lack of what I would call even due process within the office. Mm -hmm. Then we think about all of that occurring. Remember now, this was in June of 2010. This is the same time that Jabbar Collins, who was, wrong, who was wrongfully convicted, was before federal court, and, the, and at that time the district attorney was fighting very diligently to maintain that conviction, mm -hmm. okay? He soon was exonerated. So I don't know. I mean, you could go into many people have conspiracy theories, like, you know, the attention was focused on me as opposed to there. I don't right. know. What I do know is that integrity matters. And I always want to be very clear with language. Fudging timesheets is not anything I ever did. Trust me, if I had stolen time from the office of the district attorney, I wouldn't be sitting here. I probably would have been arrested. Yeah. I probably would have lost my license to practice law. After more than two decades inside absolutely, the office. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, five of the candidates ha do have experience uh -huh. working in the DA's office. You know, you just sat here and said, you know, one of the best things that happened to you was getting out of that office. Um, you know, what sort of sets you apart from the people that maybe haven't had the balance of, of experience? Okay. Excellent question. Again, thank you so much. Um, having been at the district attorney's office, I learned what it meant to be a prosecutor. I learned what it meant to serve. I learned what it meant in terms of what justice and how justice matters. When you're out there with the community, or you're at, whether you're on the corner talking to people, or whether you're in the courtroom, or people have been victims of crime, you've got to have that compassion and passion to understand what it means. I left the district attorney's office. When I say I was happy I left, I was happy I left because I could not practice justice when lying and integrity didn't matter. So I work at the borough president's office right now. And what I do is I continue to service the needs of Brooklyn Knights. I continue to do proactive things. And this becomes really important in terms of what a district attorney needs to do. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to lock people up. It's another thing to be proactive. And so I really believe in what I call proactive justice. What do you think the split should be? Because mm -hmm. there are people, and we've talked about okay. this before, who are yelling at their TV, just lock them up. Yeah. We need that tough as nails prosecutor. Yeah. Defend Brooklyn, protect us, versus the uh, more touchy-feely, let's get people into programs or reform. What do you personally feel comfortable as a split? I think it's a combination. It has to be. Trust me, you know, violent felony crimes are going to be prosecuted, mm -hmm. you know? I'm looking at the low-level crimes that are impacting black and Latino youth and our youth in general. That's problematic. When you have things like riding your bicycle on the sidewalk, spitting on the sidewalk, loitering, which equals and ends up on young people as criminal records, that's a problem. Right. You know, the goal 
goal is to really get our youth invested in the community. I'm going to create a youth advisory council, and I'm going to work with at-risk youth. I love my college-bound youth, but I'm concerned about my at-risk youth. Because yeah, you don't absolutely. have to have a college degree or, buy a, or have a home in order to be vested in your community. That's, right. That's what I want to do. All right. Uh, we have maybe like 30 seconds, okay. but uh, if you could just briefly tell us, uh, you've called upon the governor um, mm -hmm. to pass the Child Victim Act, mm -hmm. um, which among other things would eliminate the statute of limitation for child sex abuse victims. Mm -hmm. What other things would it do, and why is it important that this stay in the forefront of the, of the public? Because, you know, when you work with victims, I mean, the victims I worked with, they were able, for whatever reasons, you know, to come forward and disclose. But this kind of crime that impacts people, mm -hmm. okay, sometimes they can't even find their way because of, oftentimes, it's intrafamilial or it's someone that they know. So it takes a long time for them to get the courage or even be able to come forward. It matters because justice matters. See, it, you shouldn't just be capped off because of a certain age group that you won't get your justice. So especially when crimes of sexual assault, crimes of abuse that has happened to young people, children, they should be given the opportunity to get their justice. So it matters. There are people who are against it, like institutions, because they're worried that they're going to be civ sued civilly. Right. Justice matters for our victims, right. always. We're going to have to leave it right there. Okay. Thank you so much. She is a candidate <laughs> for Brooklyn District Attorney, and it's spelled D W I. M O H when you're on your ballot. Yes, thank you. you. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.